Welcome back to Gig Harbor Paddling. Today we're talking about how the boat moves. On the water, I see a lot of the kids be really critical of how they're moving their arms and their hips, but today I really wanted to focus on how all of that impacts how their boat moves. Uh, a lot of boats will dip, uh, the dips will be different, uh, and today we're talking about how to prevent that. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the paddle path, the paddle path, um, what that means, what it looks like in the water. Here's Ashley, we'll let the video play before we go. So we see that you know you're trying to make your hip really connected. We're we're reaching a lot. I think in this video we're thinking about that front knee. The nice thing about the erg is it kind of forces you to have to bury the blade more. So the erg provides resistance once you're deep enough, right? So a lot of kids have problem because they start to pull and the erg isn't hasn't given you resistance yet. So you pull and it's really easy and then you have to bury and then and then it provides enough resistance, right? So here we actually get to see kids try from this for the first time what it feels like to fully bury a blade and then pull. And what I see when people try and do that for the first time or when they're trying to think about it for the first time is that they break at the back here, okay? So they, they create this little curve where they they no longer keep their right frame, and then they pull back through that little crack, right? Where they, they break at the back, and then they start pulling back with the back first. So now we're gonna watch Ashley keeping all that in mind. So she's exiting, let's get a tray set up. Perfect, here's her setup. I purposely videoed her so her head was cut off so I could see the paddle. So here we are buried, now we see that there's resistance. So look at how far we're setting up, and then whoop, now we're buried, okay? So now we're fully buried, okay? And we're starting to pull back, pulling back, pulling back. We're leading with the, the hip, uh, the back, I'd say, just a little bit, but it's fine, it's fine. Oh, we're getting really far back. We need to bring up, and then we're up. So I like this paddle path. There's, we could return a little earlier. Maybe we could push down the water a little bit more, but we're fully burying the blade. I would like to see us burying the blade like out here a little more. So that means pushing this hip down and, and forward. When we keep the hip back like that, it, we just lose the connection to the power that we wanna put on the blade. So if we move that hip over, suddenly we're stacking our hips, our shoulders, our arms on the blade, rather than just our arms and our shoulders. Here's our setup, okay? And before we're buried, we are now pulling back. And it's kind of hard to see in the, the paddle shaft here, but we're pulling back. We're maybe fully buried here, which is not great because when we talked about where our stroke, our paddle is most powerful, it is this angle here. Okay, this is where we're able to get power. This is where we're able to press up, right? As we start to move this paddle blade back into this zone here, okay, we, we start losing power. I want to be out of this area. And we spend a great load of time behind the knee. Look at all this stroke that's way back compared to how little stroke we have at the front. I want us to be entering, not even, like your reach is fine. You were talking on the water a couple days ago about how you wanted to improve your reach. Your reach is okay. The biggest thing is that we're not fully buried at our catch. So what happens is we're not utilizing the reach that you do have. So before thinking about pushing that hip out farther and you know pushing out that shoulder and whatever so you can get that inch of reach, think of, you know, minimizing the reach you have, right, and using 100% of it. Because that's gonna give you way more than trying to push yourself out farther. Here's our setup, okay? So we're far forward, we have our A-frame, I know it's kind of a funky angle because I wanted to get the paddle blade in there, or shaft, okay? And now we're entering. 
Now, Thomas is a great example of someone who definitely uses his back to get into his uh, catch. So we can see that what once in his setup was a straight line, right, from the back of his knee to the top of his hand, we see as he pulls back, that line breaks. And now suddenly the back is leading instead of the whole hip. So now we're back here, we've broken, and now we're supposed to be returning. We're not returning. Oop, now we're returning to straight, and now we're rotated forward. So here, to use positive, negative, neutral, right? We're rotating back, positive, uh-oh, neutral, and now we've started your stroke. Now we're going neutral to negative. Now we're negative to neutral. And now suddenly you've done your hip return. This is what a lot of you boys do. You go from negative to neutral and go, ah, I return my hip, I'm done, exit, go out. Unfortunately, we're not getting up to positive. So now you're exiting, Oops, you're exiting, and you're still in neutral, and now your paddle is out of the water, the figurative water, okay? And we're returning the hip, we're returning the hip. Now your hip is fully rotated, and now is your setup, right? So when you talk about fully rotating before you exit, it's before you exit, rotating in the way that your setup was. I'm doing all the leg work when I'm in the water, right? Quite literally all the leg work. So I'm pushing, pulling, and then you know you hit that chicken wing, and then all I have to do is exit out, right? I don't wanna move the boat back and forth in the air. I wanna glide, and I can do that really slow or really fast, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna impact my boat. The moment that we start doing things when our paddle is out of the water and then we start lunging forward is when you get that really wobbly boat. Okay, look at the front of the boat. So we're, we're exiting here, okay? We're now exited and we're in our setup. This is all out of the water. If I wanted to wake everyone else out, what would I do? I would go and stomp, right? This, we're doing the same thing with our stroke. When we push that knee too far back and then we stay back here, the boat, all my weight's gone to the back of the boat. So it's gonna lift it up. And then if I return that all at once and I stomp down on that front foot again, right? Suddenly the boat dives, okay? So where that pressure is in that front foot really matters. I see a lot of you using the connection in your front foot, right, to push down on the, the boat, which is okay. Doing too much can make you, you know, seesaw around. And then, you know, we have to put pressure on the knee. I see a lot of you guys on the back knee go back and put a lot of weight on the back knee when you rest. We're not using this point of contact a lot. Okay, this back foot, breath, foot rest is huge. We talked with um, Kenny and Johnny about hanging off of that foot rest and they talked about how they broke like five to eight. There was some confusion between the two and how many they broke, but loads of foot rests they broke because they were pushing back and hanging off of them so much that they'd come out of the boat and they'd break, they'd snap them off, right? And that's because as we reach forward, as we rotate back, we want to hang off of that back foot in the air. We want to use our abs and think about almost like we could lift this foot up as if this is not what's pushing down, but us hanging off the back foot rest, right? And I see in this video that we could be doing that a little bit more just by looking at how the boat is surging. Boom, so now we're entering. Now it's really tall. Now you return. And see how the boat goes down? So from, here's your, that stroke was better. You're exiting. And now from the moment that you've exited, right there, to your setup, we want to see as little dip as possible. So that stroke is better. Here we are in our setup. Okay, we have that straight line. We're entering the water. Now here we are fully buried. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell. It might be, might be here. Okay, but see how we've started to break at the back already, I'd like to see this as a straighter line as we pull back. And then here we have exited. And now, I can't see the front of your boat, that's what I don't love. But see that? Here's our exit. We're all the way back, now we've fully exited. Okay, we're going forward and boom. That's where I see that your front foot has just stomped the front of the boat, right? And we're pulling back, we're leading with the back, not the hip. 
we've returned here a little bit sooner. And our setup, look at how much less the boat stomped down, right? There's no way that the boat is going to go continuously forward, right? There's always going to be a little, like, push-pull, particularly with canoeists. However, this is a good bit, right, of kind of stopping, moving back. And I think it's because of how we're leading with the back and the, uh, us not burying our blade enough. Here's your setup. We're buried here here maybe okay we're all bent over now we're pulling through oh look at the back of the boat it's way down right and then we're coming forward whoop you've remained you've gotten the back of your boat back buried the blade here what does it do to your boat it searches the back okay so watching the way that your boat moves is really important because you'll feel super strong and connected. And then we'll watch your boat. And your boat is real jerky. Right? You got to work with the water. Their setup is here. We're going down into our catch. Jack has caught the water. Austin has not. And Austin's not fully buried. Now they are both buried. They're coming out. They're exiting. Jack is fully exited. Austin is not. There we go. So we're, they're just lagging a little behind. What I like to watch uh, when I'm thinking about boat path for kayakers is that rocking, right? And the two types of rocking, okay, are on the side of the paddle, right, and on the opposite side. But when I think of not using my hips and I'm trying to get from my setup to the catch, I see kids like bend, and that, that brings the boat, in my mind, to the opposite side. We're kind of seesawing, so we're not fully getting up once we've exited, we're going straight into our catch without being able to kind of hit that setup. And then we're hitting the water, we're bending that left arm. Let's look at the boat path. What do you notice about, well, Bella, what do you notice about Danielle's boat path? Rocks. Does it rock on the same side that she paddles on or the opposite? Same side. That tells me, one, lazy hips, right? How you talked with Allison about lazy hips and they sag down. It also tells me that we have lazy abs. So a whole lower body needs a re refresh, right? And when I say lazy, I know you're not lazy, but they're, they're not strong enough, right? And so when I'm pulling back, I'm looking at the difference between that space in your armpit and your hip, and I see it crunch in, right? And so we're doing this thing where we're, we're using our hips, we're rotating, but as we rotate, we're kind of breaking and we're doing our little wobble. Here's our setup, okay? And to get to the water, instead of us dropping that top arm, right, we're bringing that back arm up. And now we're starting to rotate. That back arm is coming forward a little too soon, so it's popping up and then popping forward. So I think we need to work on keeping that a little tighter. And then we're exiting, making sure that our chest is tall. Yeah, it's kind of like an accordion. When you t say accordion, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Bending not straight and rigid. Yeah. And how do you fix an accordion paddle? Uh, you tighten your abs and sit up tall. Yeah. Look at y'all. So yeah, do you do you all see the accordion? Whoop, right there. Your shirt makes it very obvious, the red shirt. This wrist, that front wrist, Austin, and how your it drops, that palm drops, right? We want to make sure it's straightened out. And we loosen the grip on the paddle a little bit. Because if we look at Jack's wrist, right, and we see how straight that is, uh, Alan was talking about the wrist problems that you can have, and it's no good. So we want to straighten that wrist and loosen the grip on the paddle just a smidge. So the other thing that we can do to help this, we talked about, you know, accordion abs, we talked about lazy hips. We also need to be watching how we're pushing off the uh, the footboard, making sure that one foot isn't totally leaving the footboard, one foot isn't giving 100 and then one is zero. It's always that push-pull, and we always want to keep constant pressure on the footboard. Sometimes I see athletes, as they're rotating, they will lift up one of the legs, or they'll totally leave the, the contact that they have on the footboard, and so that can cause some, some shaking. When I'm thinking about the points of contact in the boat, I'm thinking about which body parts have the ability to impact where my boat is going. And that's my hips and my feet, okay? So 
you know, lazy hips. If I'm driving down, right, sometimes I think about rotating and it's easy to think about rotating down or letting your hips sag, right, and making sure you're on that equal plane. Uh, and then your feet, making sure that there's equal pressure. We're not digging into one side. Our toes, where are they pointing? When I'm thinking about all the, thi the little movements that can pack where the boat goes, I think kids get overwhelmed because they're like, oh, my, my boat's rocking and I don't know how to fix it. Think of all the, the points of contact and think of all the things that can influence those points of contact. So your feet, what are your feet doing? Are they pointing straight? Are your knees tracking over your toes? Is the pressure equal, right? Those are a whole, whole lot of things to think about. So I would encourage you boys to make sure that we are not letting your hip sag. I see here, I'm watching like Jack's hip right now, seeing it kind of sink down on the left, right? And then as you're rotating, it kind of fix itself. And I think, Austin, you're kind of leaning over to the left side, which tells me that I bet Jack is going to the right. So you were trying to exaggerate your reach so that you could like have a longer stroke. That's fine, but we want to make sure that as we're reaching, we realize that our hips can't, in the boat, they don't just go back and forth. They can also go up and down, which is kind of a funny way of thinking because it's not how we would think of it on land, right? If I'm sitting on the floor, my hip can't sink into the floorboards anymore, right? But in the boat, it can. And so as I'm rotating, I wanna be really careful on using my abs to keep my hip from kind of dropping, right? And having that, that lazy hip that we call, which we need probably a better term for it. But as I'm rotating, right, making sure I'm only rotating back, I'm not rotating down, or I'm not kind of slinking back, I'm not using my abs and letting, you know, my shoulders drop, okay? All of those things are really important. You can have a long stroke and not have the boat dip.